Welcome and thank you for tuning in. You're listening to the Beyond 50 Radio Program. I'm Daniel Davis. On the program today, we're going to be tackling something that we hear quite a bit about, especially on the television and in magazines as well as newspapers, and that is that of osteoporosis. Now, this is something that mostly seems to affect women as they age, but it also affects men as well. Today, we're going to be demystifying osteoporosis to discover exactly what it is and how we can regain normal bone density using probably simple natural solutions. We'll also discover why some approaches don't work based upon years of experience. Our guest today is going to be sharing exactly what we can do to see how we can reverse this dreaded thing. Our guest today holds a Ph.D. in molecular and cellular biology. She has also worked as a research scientist in both university and government settings and has lectured to the public for more than 30 years around the globe. Her background in the fields of genetic engineering and human tumor biology, she'll take and make the simple complex interactions between our bodies, the foods we eat, supplements we take, and lifestyles we lead to a more understandable and memorable way. I'd like to welcome to the Beyond 50 radio program today our guest, Dr. Sandra Bavakwa. Dr. Bavakwa, thank you for joining us back here on the program today. Thank you for having me back, Daniel. I appreciate it. Now, let's talk about osteoporosis. What is it that you do? What's an easy way to explain this to people so they get a better grip on it? Well, uh, understand that osteoporosis is all about uh, our, our body basically having an imbalance in the way that it monitors its own bone. Our bones are constantly breaking down and reforming. Um, there's uh, The body has specific cells actually that break down bone and cells that, that grow bone. And you can imagine that in a child, they're growing bone faster than they're breaking it down, but they also break down bone. And the turnover in an adult is generally about four months. Every four months, we have new bones. But as we get older, sometimes the building up of the bone doesn't happen as quickly as the breaking down of bone. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Now, you talk about the analysis of blood biochemistry and how that relates back to the bone health or osteoporosis. Tell us about that. Well, okay, so what I do uh, for a living is I assist uh, healthcare providers and individuals with understanding how they can bring their blood biochemistry back into balance. And that has profound effects on bone health. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at and doing a very detailed analysis of the same kind of blood test that you get for a um, per- perhaps a yearly physical. Those tests have a tremendous amount of information embedded in them that some that most uh, um, uh, healthcare providers are not familiar with because they're not deep into the biochemical world. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. We're looking at balancing blood uh, chemistry, and it turns out that that has profound effects on bone health and bone density. I think what's been fascinating about having you on the program is when you have talked about the things that you've shared with our audience here, there seems to be almost it feels practical. You know, you almost want to say, as people like to say, it seems like common sense when you talk about it. And therefore, people become more empowered about their own health. For instance, we hear a lot, let's talk about osteoporosis and how the dairy industry likes to go out there and put out commercials about how we drink our milk and make strong bones. (laughs) You know, almost as if it's a one-size-fits-all everything. But what you talk about here is that everybody has a unique biochemical signature. Let's talk about a little bit about that there so people get a better understanding about what that is. Well, there are a lot of differences from one person to another, and what I see is that um, even if someone has a, a beautiful diet, just the best diet you can imagine, you know, with lots of produce and they're getting goodly amounts of protein that their body actually wants to take in and digest really well. You mentioned dairy. Some people can digest dairy well. Some people cannot, and it can actually cause an inflammatory reaction in their gut that can keep them from taking in the protein they need to actually create good bone. 
So you can see that there's differences from one person to another. There's genetic differences, there's dietary differences, and there's personality and preference in the way that people use their bodies that determines what um, their, uh, their biochemical signature actually looks like. And so we start with where a person is today and then look at what pieces are missing. Um, for instance, I just was working with a mechanic, and he has exposure <clears throat> excuse me, to certain chemicals in his workplace, and those chemicals, in order for him to remove them from his body, for his liver to get rid of them, um, he burns up more of certain minerals than most people would because he's removing those minerals. He also is burning more vitamin D. So his stores of those minerals and vitamin D were extremely low, and of course he was having bone density issues. It makes sense. So by addressing some of these basics, uh, what happens is we get him back up on a solid foundation, and his body was able to correct the bone density issue. And that was a, that was a simple situation. Sometimes there's hormone balance that's involved. Sometimes there's inflammatory issues that are involved. So it just depends on what's going on in that individual. You know, it's it's just it's so uh, crazy at times when you think out there when we hear in the news about calcium creating strong bones, but it sounds to me like there are other things such as certain minerals and vitamins that are essential as well. Absolutely. Uh, in fact, this is a big part of my message about bone health is that, uh, honestly, it's really not all about uh, calcium. Calcium is not the most important nutrient. The most important nutrient, I mean, and anybody that's ever built a house or watched a house built knows that you have to put down a foundation before you put up the walls. If you don't have a foundation, the walls are not going to stand up. So same thing is true for bone. You've got to have a solid foundation, and that foundation is collagen. It's made of protein. And so oftentimes when I see, in fact, the most severe osteoporosis, or the more chronic, is uh, in a person that's having a really tough time digesting their protein or assimilating their protein, and that's the, the foundation. You could pour all the minerals in the world into that person, and if they don't have a foundation to create bone, they will not create bone. And that is an essential. And then we have, what's the next thing? Um, making sure that the vitamin D to vitamin K ratios are correct in their body. And that is essential. If you have vitamin A and no vitamin D, you're going to break down bone very rapidly. And th these are simple pieces that most, um, most people don't know about. And so once they learn the different steps, and we take a quick look and see where they're at, then we can address these things very, very easily. Also, vitamin C. Vitamin C is absolutely necessary for um, the cross-link member that holds on to minerals. So you have your, your foundation, all of your strands of collagen, and then you have these little cross-link members. And without vitamin C, you cannot attach your minerals to it. And I run into lots of people that, you know, they just are not really into their fruits and vegetables. They're not really taking in enough vitamin C or it bothers their belly if they supplement. So, um, and that's, a, <laughs> that's probably somebody that's not digesting their protein anyway. So the vitamin C is, is a big deal and it's missed in many cases. So we have all these different nutrients that come way before the minerals. And then the minerals and there's a lot of them, calcium, magnesium, manganese, boron, tin, I could go on. In fact, I've been a part of science advisory boards and have helped uh, product development for uh, products that are meant specifically for recovering osteoporosis. And, um, and I have my favorite, actually, that works really, really well. And so that is what I, that's a go-to. However, you don't even go to the minerals until you have that good foundation. Make sure all the other pieces, and honestly, it's pretty simple to do. You know, on the program, we talk about you know a lot of uh, natural ways that we can go into trying to, I guess, skirt around supplementation, which supplementation, I'm sure, is pretty good if you can't get everything. But, you know, it's pretty amazing uh, what is really available out there at our fingertips. And one thing that I've also discovered, too, and it sounds like you're kind of saying the same thing, is, when it comes to minerals, 
uh, they're not necessarily all created equally when it comes to bone health, are they? No, no, they're not. Um, there's definitely forms of uh, of calcium and magnesium and you know, many of the others that are more easily assimilated than others. Some are working better in the body than others. And here's a, a piece that most people don't know. When someone goes into osteoporosis or osteopenia, their calcium score in their blood will increase because they're spilling calcium. So the number goes up and sometimes a healthcare provider might get confused by that and encourage a person to decrease their calcium intake as opposed to increasing it. And that's the opposite. The body can't use that, the, the old calcium from the bones like it can the calcium that comes in from your dark green vegetables and your seeds and uh, even dairy foods. That is food calcium. And Osteoporosis can be uh, addressed using foods or supplementation, but the form of the nutrient is really, really important. Uh, If you're going after, for instance, a lot of people for a long time were using um, uh, coral calcium, and coral calcium was a really big problem for bone density. Part of the reason is because coral is amazingly good at um, grabbing onto and... and, um, It's called sequestering or hiding away heavy metals in the ocean. And so it becomes a great source of heavy metals. Well, in our body, where we hide our heavy metals is in our bone. And guess what? If you put heavy metal inside of bone, you have a very sick person. There's there's problems with that. One of the, the real big ones that gets stuck in bone is lead. And we now know, the government is now telling us, that any amount of lead in the body is a neurotoxin. It's not okay. There's zero tolerance now. So we don't want to take in coral calcium. That's, there's a problem with that. But there's other forms of calcium that are more difficult to assimilate, especially as we age, because I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm in my 60s, and I, my gut does not absorb nutrients the way it did when I was in my 20s. And that's true of all of us, most of us. We're not absorbing at the same rate. And so the type or the form of nutrient is important. Uh, if it comes from food and you're able to digest that food well, you're, you're in like Flint. That's going to work. And so, but that's going to depend on a person's druthers. I mean, I have, I have individuals that come into the office and say, listen, I haven't eaten anything green in my life and I'm not going to start now. So, <laughs> wow. So, <laughs> I'm unwilling to change my lifestyle, but I'm going to bug you here while I visit to figure out what I can do. <laughs> oh, there, there are solutions for that person. Right. We can make it, you know, and sometimes the solution is may, having recipes that they've never tried before that they find out they really love. So sometimes still the green can be absorbed or, or taken in from the diet. Um, but someone like that is going to have such severe deficiency from years and years of not taking in those foods. I have one client that's never eaten a vegetable in his life, ever, very, very picky eater, and doesn't like fruits either. So that's a problem. And there's so supplementation for him. He doesn't swallow tablets or capsules. So um, he was able to um, put together a shake um, that he loves, it's delicious, and it has everything in it that he needs. And that works for him. That's his solution. So everybody's going to have their own solution. My job as a practitioner is to give a menu, to let people have a, a selection that they can choose from so that they can find something that's going to work for them and their personality and their lifestyle. And um, that will address the problems and you know any kind of biochemical insufficiencies that we find. Uh, when we take a look. So, and my job is to teach, basically. Gotcha. You know, I remember, uh, this is probably about 15 years ago, I was in a restaurant uh, during lunchtime, and I happened to be out in the uh, lobby area there where the floor was made out of wood, so it goes from there to in the restaurant into carpet. So there was an older lady that was actually getting ready to leave with her daughter, and as she stepped out on the wooden floor, and I couldn't understand why she was wearing, you know, high heels in the first place, you know, oh, dear. Say at her age, but she was definitely up there at age, and I thought, hmm, you know, you kind of want to have your balance, but she actually slipped and fell, and what I was amazed by is 
so I, you know, I watched the whole thing, so I was right there, you know, asking her how you feel and that sort of thing. She really couldn't get up. And so I had her kind of move her leg a little bit, you know, especially in the hip area, and she seemed to not feel any pain. But the strange thing that came back was the fact that she had actually broken her hip. Mm-hmm. And I was really surprised by that because of the fall. But then again, I shouldn't have been perhaps because she was probably at least in her early 70s maybe. You know, and this is just a guess. But, you know, when it comes to bone health, especially for somebody who has did, you know, had what happened to her, you know, obviously healing doesn't come easy or maybe thoroughly. So what does a person do when something like that happens that helps to elevate their bone health Perhaps maybe if it was a little stronger for her, she might not have broke her hip. I don't know. Yes, that's true. Um, The bone can, let me see. When we create healthy bone, it it is a flexible and hard bone. The dex bands in the bone density tests look for bone density. And, uh, you know, sometimes people are using medications or uh, specific nutrients that are making uh, the bone very, very hard. But bone that is forced to become mineral uh, dense is not necessarily strong bone. In fact, what we see in people that have not taken the nutrient uh, um, approach their bones don't have a good protein matrix in them. They don't have a strong collagen matrix. So you have a very weakened matrix with a lot of mineral on it. And what happens when that bone breaks is it shatters. And now you have a catastrophic break. But in most cases, like the lady that you just talked about, um, she probably cracked her hip. And they say that uh, the stats are that people over the age of 65 when we fall, you know, fall down, go boom, um, 90% of the time there is actually a slight fracture. 90% of the time there will be a fracture of some sort uh, when there's, uh, even if there's no pain followed afterwards. And there's been studies done to, you know, just do x-rays a few days after people fall. And son of a gun, there is a light fracture, but it's not so bad that you can't just you know, get better on your own, nothing that needs to be handled. Now, the other thing that happens when you do have a fracture is the body releases endorphins, and she might have been in her um, pain-relieving, you know, our our body is set up to, uh, um, when we get injured, we have those endorphins that will give us the, um, the pain relief that we need to be able to get away from anything that just hurt us. So she could have been in that, I'm not hurting yet, thing, <laughs> you know, but I will be tomorrow. Right. So, um, so the, uh, uh, so bone has, uh, the ability to fracture more easily as we get older. And that's because as we get older, the osteoclasts or the cells that break down bone are working a little bit faster and we don't always take care of the nutrients that we need to create healthy bone. So what we want as we get older, is more flexible bones. And that's the piece that people are missing. That's why protein and protein digestion is the most important piece because it's the collagen matrix that makes bone flexible. We want to be able to flex, not just have hard bone, but flexible bone. Mm -hmm. Now, it's, uh, you know, as I was uh, talking about that particular uh, scenario there, you realize that, uh, that age obviously has an impact on bone health. Yes. Uh, now, also what I want to know is, you know, obviously bones and joints really don't heal the same, do they? No, sir, they don't. Mm-hmm. Um, although joint health is very, very much based on bone health, if you've got great bones <clears throat> at the joint, then you're more likely to be able to heal joint tissue. But joint tissue is soft tissue. Um, So you're talking about collagen and joint uh, fluid and ligaments and tendons. So the whole, uh, what we look for to be able to um, uh, assist someone with the biochemical balancing for joint health is very different than from bone health. But there are people that need both. So that's fine. But, you know, balancing blood chemistry is really a general uh, when we do biochem- a full biochemical analysis, we look across the board. So basically balancing someone across the board will create all kinds of health effects that you wouldn't expect. 
And um, it's, it's quite magical, actually. I really enjoy what I do, Daniel, because people will learn what their body needs and make their choices, and they blossom like flowers. And I, I absolutely love to see that happen. It helps people make their dreams come true. Absolutely. Especially, you know, I wanted to know, too, about exercise. What kind of an impact does that have on bone health? A tremendous uh, impact. In so fact, a lot of movement is really a good thing? or um, Well, depends on the person. Movement and, bo- uh, you know, weight-bearing exercise is the best possible thing for building bones, but appropriately done. The weight-bearing exercise that a 90-year-old would be doing to repair Uh, his or her bones is not the same as what I would be doing. I'm very physically active. I'm still, uh, you know, I'm doing downhill skiing and riding horses and, you know, I'm very physically active. Um, So what would it look like for each person is going to be different. Um, But weight-bearing exercise actually has about three times the bone-building effect of even your best bone-building medication. So this is astounding. I mean, just doing weight-bearing exercise. And that might mean uh, doing some, you know, grab a couple of soup cans and be doing certain exercises with your arms or putting those soup cans into a backpack and wearing that backpack around your day um, to be able to put some weight on the spine. It depends on where the bone density is at issue. So it could be like low in the spine, and we're looking for some weight to get down there or some leg exercises. Um, There's lots of really cool things to do, but I'll tell you that walking is amazing, and walking with a bit of weight on um, on the back and shoulders in a comfortable manner, it doesn't have to be a lot, is amazing. We tend to see bone density issues more so in people that are lighter weight. If somebody's carrying more weight as they get older, they tend to have denser bones. In fact, I'll, I'll tell you a funny story. I was doing some research on, you know, where has the densest bone ever been found in, in the human species? And the densest bone was found in Egyptian slaves. <clears throat> Even the little girls, you know, the l- little tiny women were carrying like uh, something like 200 pounds on their heads and shoulders and their bone was amazingly dense, um, more so than even like the Neanderthals because of all that, that weight-bearing exercise. And the lightest bone that was ever found in humans was in the Egyptian royalty because they were carried around on litters their whole lives. Wow. And so they were very, very <laughs> fragile. So much for that sedentary royal lifestyle, huh? <laughs> right. No, so the couch potato is in trouble with bone uh-huh. density, you see? Yeah, I gotcha. Mm. And um, so that's, that. you know, and here it is. They're the same blood, same genetics, um, but the difference between how the royalty lived and how the slaves lived was tremendously different. And so that means get up and move. Even if it's your own body weight and all you're doing is going for a walk, you're doing something for your bones. Those muscles are pulling on the bones and making them dense. And that's it. So muscle, and of course we have to have joint health to be able to do that. So making sure that there's good joint health, that people feel comfortable with their movement is important. And sometimes we have to get really creative and find ways of moving that work for each person. Wow, fascinating stuff. You know, um, I, I'm just uh, I'm curious, is there a particular tip you can give our listeners today uh, when it comes for bone health that all ages should be able to, I guess, grasp and, and take as a beginning step, I guess? Well, bone health begins, uh, or the lo- loss of bone health begins when we are children. And the so... First of all, we have to be attending and teaching our young people to take care of their bones. And it doesn't have to be taking in dairy. Dairy does work for some people. Um, Some people don't do well with cow dairy, but they do better with sheep or goat dairy. Um, Some people can't do dairy at all. They're they're casein, you know, sensitive, and they go to the seeds and the green vegetables. Um, As we get older, these, these changes in these foods do make a big difference. I mean, sesame seed butter or tahini has much more calcium in it than any dairy food you can find. 
So that's a simple thing to do is just take in some tahini. So that's something, but really the real point for bone health has to do with protein intake and making sure you've got great digestion because most of my people, especially the 50 and older crowd, those are the people that are going to have bone density issues. Generally, I'd say more than 80% of the population will have digestive issues that are at the, key, the that's the keystone to their bone health issues. So I'm going to say make sure that you're able to take in digestible proteins and make sure your protein level in your blood is good. Um, maybe the total protein should be somewhere between 7.0 and 7.4 for a woman, and that's like an optimum. That's going to be a smaller range inside the normal range. And for a man, maybe more like 7.2 to 7.6. And rarely do I find people over 50 with enough protein in their blood to maintain good bones. Wow. That's the, that's the kicker right there. Mm-hmm. If you don't have a foundation, you're going to have weakened bones. Wow. You know, it's it's just fascinating to know about all this, and you realize that, A, it's that simple, but it also takes some work to be able to, to get really good uh, bone health, doesn't it? Well, it takes some attention and sometimes a change of pattern, but I don't think of it as hard work because once you've changed a pattern, then that's your pattern, and right. you're not thinking too much about it, right? That's well, kind of how we work. Right. <laughs> not to mention you can look at it this way. If you think that's hard work, think how hard it is to heal. <laughs> oh, you know what? Bone fractures, like the lady that you spoke about, can be devastating. Bone um Bone fractures are actually a huge cost to this nation, costs us billions of dollars, and the people, uh, I mean, uh, catastrophic uh, fractures can be amazingly um, devastating for a person. It oftentimes puts, I mean, if there's a catastrophic break in a person with very weak bones, oftentimes they do not ever really heal back to the person that they were before. In someone that's had um, bisphosphonate medications in their uh, body for at least five years, they may never actually uh, heal that fracture completely. Um, So they're starting to be class action suits against some of these medications because although they increase bone density, the fractures that happen afterwards can be catastrophic, uh, shattering, and they never come back. So that that's basically taking people off the planet or not giving them a good quality of life. Wow. That's a problem. Yeah. Now, how can people find out more about your work? Do you have a website they can go to, things like that? My website is Wish for Life, and that's the number four. So W-I-S-H, the number four, L-I-F-E dot com. And you can go there and uh, learn all about, there's a, there's a, a deep library, there's um, all kinds of information there for you. There is, in fact, if you look at the, um, the MP3s and CDs, you'll see one on bone health that will give you a lot more detail than we've gone over today. And also, um, I do have some bone uh, health um, uh, concerned individuals that are going to be coming with me to a spring detox. And I I got a little bit into how toxins in our environment can affect bone health. It gets deeper than that uh, because we have environmental toxins that can affect bone health. And so every spring, I bring a, uh, a group of individuals, whether they have bone health issues or not, that are interested in getting the chemicals out of their body. And we do a spring at home detox and the program culminates in a week uh, at, in California. We go to Optimum Health Institute, and I'm there basically you know, holding hands so that people can do a detox. And we figure somewhere between 65 to 85% of the chemical toxicity in a person's body is basically removed through this program. And so wow. I do every year. And a few years back, um, uh, somebody twisted my arm, and I started allowing people to come with me on my retreat. Uh, so uh, if you go onto the website and look at the event calendar, that's something that's coming up shortly and really is appropriate for anybody with bone health concerns. 
And um, there's lots of information on the website. I just encourage you to go and explore. We have all kinds of courses and, and information available for everyone. Oh, very good. Well, Dr. Bavakwa, it's been a pleasure to have you back on the program and uh, to be able to share this information with us and, you know, kind of put the uh, empowerment back into people so they can make better decisions. That's what it's all about. (laughs) If we're empowered to have great health, um, then we have the, you know, we have a healthy body to allow us to make our dreams come true. And that's what it's all about. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being on the program. Thank you so much for having me, Daniel. I love spending time with you. All right. We want to thank you, the listeners out there, for joining us. You can also discover more. Visit us at beyond50radio.com. That is the number 50. We also have a wonderful weekly e-newsletter that we encourage you to sign up with and keep up to date with what's going on in the world of Beyond 50 as well as our upcoming shows. I'm Daniel Davis. Thank you for joining us. This is the Beyond 50 Radio program. And remember, live your day past halfway. 